It is such a beautiful day today. It's the middle of May, 2022. We've got some thunderstorms rolling in. You can see my Adirondack chairs. They are blowing around over there. I got a rug right there. Today, we're gonna to be starting a new project. Hopefully we can get something done before this thunderstorm gets started. We're gonna be moving a hose bib. Look at this mess. This is what the hose looks like most of the time. Just all out here in the way. We're gonna to try to fix that. So we're gonna move this hose bib down to the corner of the house and I'm gonna put a post up. I'm gonna put this hose hanger on there. Hopefully we will start uh, actually rolling the hose up. We got some wood for our project. We got a four by four by six and a two by four by eight. I really only need about a foot of this, but these are both treated. This is almost $20 worth of wood. These prices are crazy right now. Well, I'm just doing a fine job here. I've already dropped this thing on the ground and bent it up and scratched it. Oh, well. Now this thing came from Amazon. I think it was like $15, I don't remember. So I cut me a one foot piece off the two by four and this is gonna mount like that. Okay. And this is gonna be on the post somewhere. Now, of course, this post is gonna be two feet in the ground, so it's not gonna be this tall, but this would not look good, right? That would be kind of bad. So I'm gonna cut a little chunk out of this four by four post so we can uh, recess this down in there. Uh, that looks good. So we don't have a bunch of fancy tools here. We have our circular saw. Got a bunch of cuts in here. They are as wide as the two by four and about as deep as the two by four. So now I'm gonna take my chisel and just break all these pieces out of here and clean it up. That went better than I thought it would. I mean, surprising since I really don't know what I'm doing here. We got all our little cheese slices here. I mean, it only took me two or three minutes to do this. It's a little bit snug. Well, that turned out real nice. So I got a few three inch screws. Got my drill here. So I'm gonna screw this thing together. I just put some marks on here to help me uh, line it up in the center. We got four screws in there. So that is really solid. I know the pull pump running is probably not good for the video, but I just got my hole dug. That is two feet deep. Took me maybe 10 minutes. Wasn't too bad. The ground was pretty soft. Post hole diggers there. So I'm not gonna use any concrete. I've got some gravel, got my little whatever thing. I'm gonna be just kind of jabbing it down in there to uh, pack the stuff down, the dirt and the gravel, and that should be good enough. I got the post in there. The hole is two feet deep. It's full of gravel. I've got it packed in there really tight. This thing feels solid. I'm gonna spread this dirt out now. I'm about to put some primer on this post. I've got some kills too. I'm using this because I already had it from another project. Just got done with the primer. I think it looks good. I think I'm just gonna leave it at one coat and I'm gonna go eat some dinner. It's been raining for two days. I got this post painted a couple days ago. That is the same blue that is underneath the porch. Uh, that's called Lighthouse Shadows. It's Valspar paint from Lowe's. All right, now we're gonna mount this uh, hose hanger here got mud splashed all over the uh, post there eventually this is going to be covered with uh, pine straw but haven't got around to it yet yeah that looks pretty good i'm not sure if it's level i just kind of eyeballed it guessed at it whatever i think it's good enough now we need to move the hose bib and i'm trying to figure out where i want it I like how low it is. I don't, I don't know. I guess this is a standard height. My other one on the side of the house is about this high. But I don't really want it here. I want it further over here.
but uh, you can't really tell in the video, but that's, that's pretty high. Is that gonna look weird if I have it up this high? When we built our house a few years ago, I chose to use PEX plumbing. I like it because it's cheaper than copper, it's easy to work on, it's easy to make changes to, repairs and um, additions or whatever, they're fast. You don't have to wait for glue to dry. You don't have to solder any kind of copper together. It just requires a few simple tools. I think it's very DIY friendly. I got three 10 foot sticks of half inch PEX. These were $4 each. I had to buy me some new cutters also. Uh, the last pair I had, I think I had them for like 20 years anyway. These were pretty expensive. I think they might've been like $15. And this is my PEX crimping tool. I've had this probably 15 years. I don't know. It's a cobalt. I got it at Lowe's. Had this thing forever. I really like this one because it will do four different sizes. I don't even think you can buy this particular one anymore because it's so old, but um, this one unit here, it'll do half inch, one inch, three quarter, and then three eighths. I don't even know what three eighths is for. Uh, normally in houses, it's half, three quarter, and one inch. I also got some miscellaneous couplings and 90s and some uh, PEX clamps. The old hose bib has a shut off right here, so we're gonna turn this off. I'm gonna open up the hose bib and let all the water drain out. Or maybe not. <laughs> it's kind of tough to film this. I'm gonna cut this PEX right here because we wanna put a 90 on there and send it down to the end of the house. To the new location so I've got my ladder I got a bucket here to catch any water we got the new fancy cutters and maybe right there I might shorten this up in a minute Oh, nice. Right into the bucket. I'm gonna crimp this 90 onto this half inch PEX. I think this 90 cost about $4. I don't know how much these rings are, the crimp rings. I bought them a few years ago. And uh, so I got my little half inch crimper, this die, I don't know what this thing is called, but easy to replace. You just loosen these screws and they pop right out. Put whatever size you need in there. All right, first you put the little crimp ring on there. Put your uh, whatever coupling, 90, whatever you got. Squeeze it down. And then I usually turn it and do it one more time just because it makes me feel better. Pretty easy. I've got my 90 crimped on there and we got the line started. You can see it hanging down, down there. I'm going to remove this old water line coming down this wall here. So I'm just making my way, pulling out the spray foam. I'm gonna reuse this hose bib. So we're gonna unscrew this. I've got all the foam out. Let's see if we can pull this out of here. We're slowly getting there. We got most of this out. So we're down here. This is where it makes the 90 and goes outside the wall. So I'm gonna try to get my cutters in here somehow. 
and cut this off so I can pull the hose bib out. I'm trying to cut this right above the ring. Okay. Hmm. The 90 that's crimped on the other end is keeping this from pulling through the wall. So I just pulled this out. Now I got my cutters on here and Okay, there we go. Now we can pull this little piece out and the insulation. I'm gonna fix this hole later. For right now, we're just gonna stuff a little bag in there. Put some masking tape over it maybe. Just, I wanna keep the little critters out. It may be a day or so before I can Fill this hole in. Or you might see this in two years from now in another video. We are starting to work our way down the corner here. You can see where I've been removing some foam and up there. So the new hose bib is gonna be right here. I need to drill a hole through this top plate to put the water line through. So I've just got my drill Got a 5 8 inch paddle bit. We got the water line going down the wall now. You can see it going through the top plate. And I got a uh, coupling right here. Down here I've got uh, three PEX clamps. So the water line is secure. The way that I'm cutting this insulation, just have a good sharp knife. And you just pull it out of there. I got a bucket down here to keep my mess in. These walls are two by six. So I'm, I'm taking about half of the insulation out of there. I need to know where to put the hose bib. Lucky for me, I got a window right here. And I think I want it about in the middle of this piece of siding. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it in here. And I've got some marks down the wall there. I got one over there. So that should be, if I pop a hole out there, that should be about the middle of that siding. In the hole, you can see the sheathing. I'm gonna drill outside first with a very small drill bit. And that, that way, just to make sure that I'm in the right place in that siding. It's a little bit low, but I think that's a pretty good spot right there. I'm gonna use a three quarter inch paddle bit to drill the hole. Half inch paddle bit works great for this water line, but I need it a little bit bigger because I need this to be flush on the siding. So I need it a little bit bigger for this right here. I think three quarter inch is perfect. Very snug fit. I said earlier that we're gonna reuse this hose bib. This is something that I like about PEX. I'm going to cut this ring off of here and then I can reuse this. I have some other stuff from a few years ago. This shutoff valve, these are like $10 to $15 depending on the size. I have another hose bib. I just saved these. I cut them apart from a different project a few years ago. Anytime I need one of these, I can just cut these rings off and reuse this stuff. This is the 90 that I just took out of the wall over here. Right, I can just cut these rings off and reuse this piece. To cut these rings off, I'm gonna be using my Dremel tool. I love this thing. I have used this for hundreds of different projects. I like the, the heavy duty cutoff wheel. That's what I use the most. 
I just cut through this ring and I think it maybe took 20 seconds. So now I'll just take some pliers and pry this thing off of here. We got the old pecs off of there. This thing is ready to be used again. I've cut me a little piece here that we're gonna stub through the wall. And here comes the tricky part. The one thing I don't like about pecs, I have this huge crimper. Now it's easy, this piece coming up and down, I can get it in here and crimp it. But if I'm doing a 90, like this, you know, just pretend that's back in the wall there. Okay, it's not gonna stay up. But I can crimp it this way, the piece that runs up and down. But that ring that you see right there, of course I can rip all this foam out. I don't care about that, but you know, it's, it's too big. So trying to get this up in the wall there, it can be kind of tricky. Sometimes you'll end up crimping your ring crooked. So we're gonna kind of play around with this for a minute. There's a couple different ways I can do it. And I'm gonna try to figure this out. Now also they probably make some smaller crimpers or uh, special crimpers that are made for tight areas. I don't do this professionally, so I'm not gonna spend the money on that. I got my 90 crimped on this piece going through the wall. So we'll slide it in there. Now that's about where I want it, I think. So I'm gonna take my marker and put a mark back there where it goes through the wall. I just used my permanent marker. You can see I got that mark there. So let me put it back in place. That's about right. So this thing sticking through the wall should be in the right spot. I'm gonna put a mark here. Pull it back out of the wall. You can see the two marks right here. That's the inside of the sheathing and that's the outside of the siding. The hose bib is gonna be sitting about right here. So I need to put a mark about right here because the pipe is gonna be up to here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's better to leave it longer and have to cut more off later. So we're gonna cut this about right here. Got Miss B over there floating in the pool. What? I'm gonna test fit this before I crimp it on. So you see there's no crimp ring. That's the mark for the inside of the wall. I think that is gonna be good. So now the, uh, the water line coming down the wall, got my marker here. I need to mark it and cut it off. We got it cut off. And that is gonna be, it's gonna be good. Now this is the insulation that I took off the other one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this line. I really don't think I need it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. That's how they had it. So I'll go ahead and slide it on this water line. And it fits in there nice and snug. We got all the insulation on there and I went ahead and crimped on this little short piece so we can stick it out through the wall. Now right now I've got it pushed out as far as it will go. Right now, this is not crimped on. I just got it kind of stuck together. Got my crimpers here. I'm gonna get Miss B to go inside and push that water line out as far as it'll go. 
to give me a little more room to get my crimpers in here. All right, she's inside pushing it out and you can see I have a lot more room to crimp. All right, we got it crimped on there. That's good. Let's test this thing out. See if we have any leaks. So we're gonna turn this on. I've already got the hose hooked up to it. It works. I just put some clamps on this water line coming down the wall. You can see one right here. Got another one down here. Another one at the top. I also finished putting the insulation. You know, there's a little piece back here. Not that I really think it needs it, but I put it on there anyway. We've got a solar powered cap light for the top of this post. I think this was about $10 at Lowe's. A couple screws and it's on there. Looks pretty good. I don't know if it'll have long enough to charge today to actually start working tonight. I don't like how the shutoff valve is out here with no support. Just kind of hanging out here in the middle of nowhere. This looks a lot better. I added some two by four bracing in here. I put some PEX clamps up here. I've got a clamp up here. This is very secure now. You can still turn it off and on. What are we gonna do with the hole in the siding where the old hose bib was? I think I'm gonna try some Bondo, all purpose putty. It's been a couple days, but we are back on the project. You gotta be really quick working with this Bondo. It dries very fast. I got the first coat on the wall. I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then sand it down. I got the second coat on there. It's looking pretty good. So the first coat, I sanded it down, had a few gouges and indentions, so just put a quick little second coat. And this is a hardy plank siding. So it looks like wood. It's got these little ridges and uh, I guess just ridges and wood grain look. So I think I'm gonna try my Dremel tool. And I'm not looking for perfection, but I'm gonna go through some of these grooves and ridges and just kind of grind those out just so this isn't so noticeable after I prime it and paint it. I got this all sanded down just with some sandpaper and then I took the Dremel tool and you can see how I kind of got the ridges cut back out. So it doesn't look perfect, but once I prime this and then I repaint this entire wall, I think it's gonna look great. Nobody's ever gonna know that there was a hole right there. It is a beautiful overcast day here in the second week of June. <laughs> We're still working on the hose bib. I've been under the weather for like uh, about the last week and a half. Finally starting to feel better. So technically the hose bib's done. It's been done probably for two weeks. It's working, it's not leaking. We've got a bunch of new plants we've been putting in the ground. So we're using it every day to water and we're actually rolling it up. Nice and neat. We're not tripping over it out here on the patio. I'm gonna end this video here. I still have to prime and paint this. I've got the primer. I don't have the paint. This is Sherwin-Williams Alabaster. I have not tried to get this paint for a couple months, but back in the fall, Sherwin-Williams was having a shortage. They could not get the base to make this white paint. So maybe I'll check with them now that it's been probably six months. It's probably been a little longer than six months. Anyway, hopefully they can get it now and I can finish this up. I actually need to paint this back wall and repaint the front wall in my house. If you made it this far in my video, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.